a short, spoiler-free look at the second game in the Holiday Hijinks series, The Independent Incident, a super tiny escape room in a box experience from friends of the show Grand Gamers Guild, who we have to thank for handing over a review copy of this card game. So The Independence Incident was designed by Jonathan Chafer, who also did all the artwork and graphic design for the game. Great job, Jonathan. It's designed for one to four players and is a timed puzzle experience with the best score requiring you to beat it in under an hour. This is the second of a series of 18 card puzzle games, each with a holiday theme, all published by Grand Gamers Guild. Now, this particular experience was published in 2021. There is no age limit listed on these games, and the content is family friendly. Due to the theme of this particular holiday hijinks game, the 4th of July, knowledge of American history will help a lot, but it's not necessary. All of the information required to solve the puzzles here can be found on the game's webpage, which is required to use in order to even play the game. Now, the way this system works and works with only 18 cards is due to the fact it's web driven. Now, there's no app to download, but you do get a QR code to send scan, which brings you to a page which lists all the games in the series, and you just pick which game you're playing. As this is a puzzle experience that can only be played once, we didn't bother to do an unboxing video. Really, there isn't that much to see either. The Independence Incident comes in a small four-fold card holder that has instructions in it and a stack of 18 double-sided cards, which you shouldn't look through. Yeah, component-wise, there's not a lot to talk about. I do dig just how small these holiday hijinks games are. Like you could almost fit this in your wallet and the pack they come in is resealable. You also don't destroy anything while playing. So you can easily just pack it back up and pass the card pack onto someone else when you're done. As for how to play, you discover this as you go along. But the general premise is flip over card one and it presents a puzzle. You solve the puzzle as a group and then go on to the web and enter your answer. If you're right, it will tell you to draw another card, which will contain the next puzzle, and so on. Some puzzles are bigger, and you will draw more than just one card. And at some point, you will need to use all the cards together. Now, the cards end up telling a story. It was a rather national treasure type of story based, of course, around American history, historical artifacts, and the 4th of July. Many of the puzzles will test your knowledge of American history, and for those of you who aren't brushed up on the Founding Fathers, all of the information you need can actually be found on the game's webpage. In addition, it is a highly detailed step-by-step -step clue system, similar to what we've seen in other escape room-style games. Initial hints, just making sure you have what you need on hand, with each progressive hint giving more and more information, and the ability to just look at the solution. This is all done on a card number basis. So you continue solving puzzle after puzzle until you get to the final solution. Then you're given a score out of five based on how long you took and how many clues you used. At that point, you can compare your score with others who played the game, pack it back up and give it to someone else to go through. So you played this with the kids and Dee's extended family. How mm -hmm. did it go as a bunch of Canadians playing a July 4th based game? So it was better and worse than I thought it would be all at once. So it was worse in the fact that the puzzles here really are American history based puzzles. Um, all of them were American history based. It wasn't like uh, you were just solving logic puzzles that happened to have American history in them. And like this required you to know things like popular American patriotic songs. Now, even as someone who grew up just south of Detroit with American TV through most of my childhood, my American knowledge was sadly lacking as far as this particular puzzle was concerned. Better, though, like the, the better than I expected side of this, though, was that all of the information I needed was easily accessible on the game's page and easy to find. So when you figure out what you're looking at, it must be an American patriotic song. You can then go through the list of American patriotic songs and figure out what to do next. Right? Now, the nice thing about this is that everything was there in one place. It's not like we had to randomly Google stuff to try to solve any answers, which is something similar escape puzzles have had us do. Indeed. While it may seem a bit like cheating, having all the information present, 247 years of history is a lot to just Google through. So having a bit of context makes a big difference. 
Now, in the end, we got a score of 4.5 out of 5, which I got to say is pretty good for a group of Canadians. Now, we did have to use a couple clues, and we did go over the one-hour time limit by about 30 minutes. So that was that was the most shocking part. Now, I will say, though, most of that time was spent doing research on the game's webpage. Now, I think someone born and raised in the U.S. probably would have blown past some of the puzzles that required some research for us. Though, depending on your history education, your mileage may vary. Now, before some final thoughts, I do want to bring up player count. Now, I noticed when I looked up this game on Board Game Geek that it lists as one to four players. I didn't see anything on the packaging indicating that. So I'm not sure where the official player count is, but we played with five. And I got to say that felt like too much. The puzzles here are presented in a linear order. You are flipping card one, you are solving the puzzle on card one, then you're flipping, say, card two. Though if I remember, they didn't go in order. You jumped around a bit so that, you know, to make sure you're not spoiling anything by seeing the back of a card. Um, There wasn't really anything where everyone could work on their own puzzle at once. We were all trying to solve the same thing. And I think five heads was a bit much for that, especially with the... People ever wanting to see the card. Can I see it? Can I see it? Can I see it? Was it was a bit of an issue. I think the sweet spot here would be at least two players because in as as most of the escape room games, you want two different points of view and two two different sets of eyes looking at your puzzles to get through them. And maybe a third set of eyes, like a third person in there to also help out and provide another perspective. I think past that, you're gonna have players sitting out on various aspects of the puzzles. Now, unlike larger puzzles we've reviewed, there's just not enough material to spread around and work on in parallel. It's one puzzle at a time on small playing cards. Overall, though, this was a very solid puzzle experience. Despite having a rating of three out of three for difficulty, we never felt completely lost and we never had to look up an answer. We did use a couple clues, which I have to say made us feel rather smart, especially as Canadians doing a game made for Americans. I was especially impressed by how much puzzle was packed in this small pack of 18 cards. Like you only have 18 cards here. And I felt I got as much, if not more experience out of this than I have in larger big box escape room games. It costs triple the cost of this game. Though with this format, you're not getting all those fun knickknacks and fancy aspects of papers and menus Mm -hmm. and other things that you get in the larger escape room boxes. This game and really the rest of the game in the series also have the added bonus of being rather thematic, right? This game was bleeding American history. The games are tied to many different holidays at this point. And to me, this makes them the perfect game to, of course, play on the appropriate day. What better way to celebrate U.S. Independence Day as a Canadian than to play an escape room game? Come on. And, well, if you are from the U.S., this would be a perfect distraction after eating too many burgers and hot dogs when you need to sit down for a bit after the family barbecue. Of course, if you've been imbibing adult beverages for the holiday, you might want to let someone else take the lead on solving puzzles. Now, if you're a puzzle game fan, I can't see any reason not to pick up at least some of the games in the series. Well, I can see other Canadians skipping this one in particular. Um, I think most people are going to enjoy a short escape room experience after trick-or-treating or on someone's birthday. And with so far seven different ones to choose from, if they all remain engage- as engaging as this one, there should be at least one for everyone. Now, while these games have a very reasonable price of only 11 bucks each, you can get them even cheaper if you're willing to print your own copies. I gotta say, it's not often a publisher offers print-and-play versions of their games, But I think an 18 card escape room game is pretty much the perfect format for a print and play file, even one I'm willing to spend the ink on. The games are half price if you decide to go with the print and play option. Well, that's it for our spoiler free look at the Independence Incident, the second game in Grand Gamer Guild's holiday hijinks line. We love the fact that more publishers are putting out holiday themed games as we can't think of better ways to spend a holiday than gaming with friends or family. What's your favorite holiday-themed game? Or perhaps a game that isn't holiday-themed, but that you play every year together to celebrate. Get a bit more of a look, still spoiler-free, of this 18-card escape room game over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com through my written review. 